Right guys, so yesterday I spent about six hours working on the hex beam and made some really good progress. And the purpose of this video is really to just give you an update on that progress if you're building along. Um, hopefully there's some more hints and tips. This is by no means the last video you'll see on the hex beam. I've still got quite a few more videos to do, get an in-depth um, of all the various sub-assemblies of the hex beam. Um, but I was able to get the hex beam up um, around about six metres in the air, which actually allowed me to take some measurements, um, which I'll cover shortly. So the weight of the hex beam. So have a think to yourself for what you've seen here. Have a think, what do you think this hex beam actually weighs? And I'll tell you um, towards the end of the video. So, got a number of changes to make to this uh, hex beam, um, but I'll, I'm just going to go through these points. So you see that I'm using yellow ropes all the way around the hex beam and from the centre to the outside. Um, this was just really cheap rope that I had because I didn't want to use my good Mastrant 2mm rope that I had. So now I'm at a point I know I could use the Mastrant and I could use a little ferrules and make them nice and neat. So that's one of the things I need to do. Um, on the spreader arms themselves, I need to run shock cord or it's the cord that comes with the tent poles, run them through them so it keeps the poles together so it makes them really easy um, to actually just put out. Um, you'll notice at the top of the centre post I've removed the PVC end cap and the eye bolt and instead I've actually just drilled holes all the way around the pipe because I'm thinking, you know, simplifying things so basically put a bit of tape around it with marks on it and just drilled six holes um, evenly around the circumference of the pipe. Now, the centre post itself is fine, um, but I would like to upgrade it and I'd like to upgrade it with a coaxial um, uh, centre post and I'm, I'm going to do that. I've already got a little piece of software which is going to allow me to make a 50 ohm uh, uh, centre post, but there is some logistical issues and actually how I'm actually going to insulate the centre conductor from the shield and so on. So there's some, still some minor issues that I need to uh, I need to sort out. Uh, I've, ins I've installed a choke ballon on this. Now I've used what I had to hand and that was a GM3 SEK choke which provides sufficient choking 20 metres through 10. It's a little bit bulky, it's at the top of the hex beam so I would uh, preferably be like to use some sort of sleeve um, ferrite so if you could suggest some I'll probably go and have a look at um, the G3 TXQ uh, information because I think he's got the late Steve he's got some some uh, he's done the test and knows what to use for that the coax I'm using on that choke ballon was a form of RG142 so again it's going to handle QRO power um, now you have to attach your uh, coax connection or choke connection at the 20 meter element and a lot of them come over the top but I've decided to use the bolts and um, they basically go through um, the um, hydraulic clamps through the pot through the um, center post itself and are actually working a uh, great um, on the spreaders themselves I've put some color coding and that's for my benefit because I've been taking loads of notes so I would advise you if you're Building a hex beam, take notes after notes and then some more notes and then those are then backed up by pictures. So when you go back to after a period of time, you're able to, you know, jog your memory uh, where you've been. So when I actually got this hex beam up in the air, it was as I kind of thought. Now, I've used the K4 KIO website, build a hex beam as the basis for my hex beam. And that's helped me get a lot of the rough sizes, but mines have come out slightly different and I will cover those um, in a future video um, but the elements all the elements were I suppose averaging about two and a half percent longer than what they needed to be so the resonance was lower so I think for example on 20 meters it was resonance something like 13.8 and I think the worst case was 2.9 percent out um, but not really bad at all so now I need to remeasure those wires and shorten them by that percentage which will then hopefully shorten them um, and bring them into resonance where I want them in the band. Um, the antenna was actually still usable. Um, every band was still below three to one SWR. Conditions were absolutely dire yesterday. I'm not just saying that, we've just been hit with a with a big storm. So you could check those out. That was on the 27th of uh, April. 
really dire conditions. But I did make a couple of contacts into Switzerland, Swiss contest. So that was fine, five watts into the hex beam, and I was delighted for that. But it was all about doing this R&D, which was allowing me to get various measurements. So now I can actually go away and do all the final touches, the final snagging. So the next time that I put it up, it should hopefully be on the money or as close to. Now, you need to get this hex beam up in the air somehow. So I'm using my Wymo 11 meter mast. Now I'm not using all 11 meters. Um, I think that would be quite high and all had this guide at the bottom, but it wasn't that windy yesterday, which was another bonus of why I did it. Um, so the center post uh, is 20 millimeters. So I was able to just slide that inside my Wymo mast, the 25 millimeter section, and there's a clamp on it, which is cut in four places. So it just clamps on and that held the hex beam uh, absolutely great. Um, I do need to look at guying further up and somebody, I can't remember where I'd seen it, but somebody had come up with a design for guying plates but allowed you to run um, the coax through the middle. Um, so I need to look at that so I could basically turn it by hand and the coax doesn't turn with it. Doesn't turn with it. So getting back to the weight, the total weight of this hex beam was uh, four, five, three, four grams. So um, just over four and a half kilograms and I think that's really good. Um, I think if I maybe went with the coaxial uh, center post, I may be to get that down and shave a couple of hundred grams off that again, who knows. But I think that's a really reasonable figure. Again, this hex beam is a field portable hex beam. Remember that. It's not designed for going up for months on end where you can't get it. Um, it's, it's quick to go up, it's quick to come down. And if anything needs fixed, it'll be easy to fix. And I'll actually have a little... Um, a little spares package that I take with me. So if anything should happen, I'll even have a, um, I'll take seven spreaders with me, only needing six. So if something happens with one, I can easily take it down um, and then, uh, you know, just swap that over. So a lot's happening with the hex beam. It's been a really good project. Um, I'm actually looking at building a smaller hex beam. I'm going to call that the city hex, and that's going to cover 15, 12, and 10 because 15 meters has been a fantastic band of the moment. Uh, 10 and 12, not so much. But if you've got a very small garden, perhaps a city lot, um, uh, you know, an apartment, something, maybe you're up in there, you know, this, this small hex beam for 15, uh, 12, and 10 may be of some interest to you. So that will be coming up in the following months. Right guys, so if you've got any comments, critique, you know, please leave them below. Tell me what you think. Tell me how you're getting on with your build and we'll catch you again soon. Bye for now.